guys, welcome back to Black Femininity TV where we give you the craziest stories and scandals in pop culture from past to present. And since R. Kelly has been the topic of everyone's discussion lately, I thought it'd be nice to bring you guys a story. Back in the early 2000s, R. Kelly and Jay-Z collaborated on two albums and kicked off a four city tour, but tension and rivalry caused them to only do 24 shows. Here's how their partnership erupted into a criminal case, a lawsuit, and R. Kelly being banned from their tour in 2004. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. R. Kelly and Jay-Z announced at a press conference their Best of Both Worlds album on January 24th, 2002 in New York City. The Jay-Z and R. Kelly Best of Both Worlds album was released on March 26, 2002, a month after the video of him urinating and engaging in sex with an underage girl surfaced. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard Top R&B and Hip Hop album chart and number two on the Billboard 200 chart. The album was certified platinum and was nominated for a Soul Train Music Award for Best R&B and Soul Album. A tour was supposed to follow after the release of the album. However, it was postponed when R. Kelly was arrested and indicted on 21 counts of child pornography. And in 2003, he was arrested again after Miami police searched his home and 12 images of an underage girl on his digital camera were recovered. But the charges were dropped in early 2004 due to lack of probable cause for the search warrant. Despite R. Kelly's legal troubles with child pornography and sex with minors, Jay-Z continued to work with him and their second joint album, Unfinished Business, was released in October of 2004 and debuted at number one on Billboard's 200 chart. Then the two embarked on their Best of Both Worlds tour that was scheduled to have 40 shows. The show opened on September 29th of 2004 in Rosemont, Illinois, and R. Kelly complained that Jay's entourage were sabotaging his set with bad lighting. On the second show, Kelly showed up two hours late and left the show early, forcing Jay to finish the show by himself, although they were scheduled to perform the whole show together. Because of Kelly being late, the show ended at 1 a.m., and as a result, they had to cancel their third show the next day because they couldn't arrive in Cincinnati on time. Jay claimed that Kelly refused to rehearse with him. On October 17th, while performing in Memphis, Jay left the show early for an emergency, but was later seen partying at Usher's birthday party that night. Then in St. Louis on October 23rd, Kelly stopped his performance abruptly to complain about lighting difficulty and allegedly assaulted the lighting director. And the Milwaukee and Hartford shows were canceled. Drop, nigga, big boy, drop. We be the only big boys that the big boy buys. Go get him, On October 29th, during their Madison Square Garden show in New York City, Kelly told the audience that two men were brandishing guns at him and dropped the mic and walked off the stage. After security checked the area, Kelly was cleared to return to the stage. Upon his return to the stage, he and four of his bodyguards were pepper sprayed and maced by Jay's longtime friend, Ty Smith, and Kelly was rushed to the hospital to be treated. Ty was later arrested and charged with assault. The next day, the two did separate interviews with Angie Martinez. Jay claimed that Kelly was jealous of him, and Kelly admitted that he never actually saw a gun. Like, did you have to really, like, hold back on certain situations to try to make it work? I'm, oh, you know are you kidding me? I, okay. I, 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 are you kidding me? I mean, I, I went way out of my way, way, I mean... First of all, the first, the second show in Chicago, after the first night was a, it was terrible, right? And this is your hometown, like, it was terrible, right? So the second night, the guy is on the bus. He won't first, he won't get off the bus. I'm waiting downstairs two hours in my white suit, like two hours. This guy don't come downstairs and say, "Yo, man," you know. His his excuse was he's waiting for his show. We well, don't do that now. Like he's changing his lineup and he's waiting for his show. But he never said nothing to me. Like I'm just sitting there, he's on the bus hiding. They, they're scared to knock on the bus. You know, and I'm downstairs, wait two hours. Like, wow. like I don't work for you, B. Like, what we. Let me tell you something. We talk, I was going to do that in Chicago, but I was, talk, I was just going to set it off crazy in Chicago. And just No, I'm not going nowhere. I was going to do 45 hits in a row in Chicago and just 
own the whole city. But I gave him that leeway because it was his town. Yo, your, you game, know? your game face is crazy because the other day when I was asking you what was going on, you was really holding it together. I'm holding the guy down. Yeah, I'm at the radio station 6 in the morning, right, doing interviews to 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 6 by myself doing interviews, you know, holding this guy down. Yeah, yeah. Jay, there's rumors that uh, R. Kelly's in the hospital right now. Whatever. <laughs> no, is that true, E? Yep. From what? I don't know. What do you, well, where did you hear that? You can't just say that. I'm saying I heard that, you know, he was with Catholic people and they was over at home in the hospital. Do you know anything about that? No, nah, man. Whatever, man. Wait, let me see what I can find out. Let me see what I can find out. Jay-Z is here. Excuse me for not being the most sympathetic person at this specific Sen time. Sensitive? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think people had guns in the garden. <laughs> That's crazy. Yo, come on, man. <laughs> Yo, you're serious? Yo, you're acting like I'm just so... That's not crazy? No. That, that lunatic, that ain't absolutely bonkers to you? Like, Lord. um, what's happening? And he, and I look through the thing, and I see him in, in the front of the stage, but I can't hear what he's saying. I thought he was going for the lights move again. Yo, my lights is messed up again, you mm -hmm. know. I thought he was going for that move again. I didn't know he said something as ridiculous as... Someone in the crowd is pointing a gun at him. That's Madison Square Garden. That's a world class. I mean, they're tough in the garden. You can't even, you can't do what you want in the garden. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. Going you cannot to get a gun in Madison Square Garden. Are you crazy? Like, do we, does he know where he's at? This is the garden. Man. You know what I'm saying? So what, at what point did Because people gave him love when he was performing. Yeah, but, it's, it, but that's the problem. We even have good shows. But if I get love, like if people give me love, he has a problem with that. Like his ego cannot take that. That's the man. That's just... That's have just you tried the most insecure. Of course. To of course. It? And I've talked to him like a real dude because he's not used to having real dudes. Like, yo, dude, you're ruining yourself. You know, I don't work for you, B. You know what I'm saying? I don't work for you, nor... Nor um, am I under you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a bad dude myself. And what's his reaction to that? Like, you know, my lights. I said, no, it wasn't your lights. It was just, because his first show, first two shows was horrible. I was like, it's your, it's your lineup, B. Change your lineup. Mm -hmm. And he changed the lineup when we started having good shows for a while. And then back into this. Like that? Thing. Just like as blunt like that, you told him? Oh, yeah, I'm a real dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got a whole arena full of people that came to see both of us. And now I got to carry that whole weight. Like, that could have went out anyway. He put me out there. He put yeah. me out there too many times. I have it's, to just, say, it's just too many times. It's enough. I have to say, I mean, you know I love you. You know I'm a, you know, a J fan. But tonight, like, a lot, majority, most people would have just fell apart in that kind of situation. And you... I, I mean, Shout out to Usher too, man. I mean, because he, he came, he came, and he really just, he, he just, on, on, on call, like, like... Talking about. I miss my cue in St. Louis for no reason. First of all, let me explain to you about St. Louis. The lighting cue that was missed was two shows back, two sets back. Like he had a set. It was. I mean, they miss my cue every night. They miss my cue on the opening on my when I had my hands folded. That was my money joint. <laughs> Right? They was late on my queue. I could have left. I, I mean, but so what? Right. So what? Because I know there was a show in Connecticut that was canceled. Is yeah. This, is this? Yeah, because he wanted to get a new lighting a new lighting guy. So you had to cancel the show? We had to cancel two shows. We had to cancel Milwaukee, and we had to cancel Connecticut. You guys are never going to cancel St. Louis, like, you're gonna and we canceled... Uh, you okay? Good. 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 We're hearing rumors that like, a hospital, you're in the hospital or something. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good, man. This guy sprayed with some pepper spray in my eyes. I had to go to the hospital to get it drained or something. You got sprayed before this, before you left or after you left? This was uh, when I was going back on the stage before I left. Wait a minute. You got sprayed before you got on stage? No, I was going back on stage to perform the night after I left off stage. I know you guys may not want to hear this, but I apologize to New York. And I apologize to my fans for the show going left the way it did tonight. That was certainly not my um, intentions to make the show go left. Mm -hmm. um, I love performing. I don't care who I perform with. Mm -hmm. I'm very secure. I am. I've been in this for 15 years. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna, and I'm still successful at it. I'm still, I feel at the top of my game. I feel real good about that. Some shows uh, I've ripped. Some shows Jay's ripped. I expected what I expected here because this is his home. Mm -hmm. Doing me and Jay's part 
I saw a guy looking real hard at me, you know what I'm saying? And I said, okay, it's New York, it's hard, it's all good, you know what I'm saying? But I went back to the left, came right back to the right, and during that time, dude opened up his coat. I can't say the guy had a gun. I'm not going to lie on anybody. I don't know if he had a gun. But when he made the movement to open up his coat, this is, I, I saw something. I don't know what I saw. It was like six row, whatever. That's what happened. I bypassed it. I, I, I didn't worry about it. But when I went backstage, after Jay came out, I went back to change so I could come out for my segment. Uh, I asked my wardrobe. I told my wardrobe lady what had happened. And I asked her, what do you think I should do? You think I should, because I don't want nobody thinking that um, it's going to be some more drama or anything like that. But she told me I should just let security know or whatever. That time I was talking to her and changing. Between talking to her and changing, I got back out. It was my time to go back out mm -hmm. for ignition. I came back out for ignition. The guy wasn't there. Uh, I had told my guy John to go around and see if he had saw the guy. John said he actually remember a guy sitting like a maybe fifth or sixth row. So he ran out there, but he said the guy wasn't there. I came out and I didn't see the guy either. But as I'm performing, now I'm really into the crowd, like really looking in the crowd. I see another guy in the bleachers doing the same damn thing. You know what I'm saying? Excuse my French, but I saw another you saw, guy. Uh, you saw him from the bleachers? There was another guy in the bleachers to my right doing the same thing. Maybe four rows up. Four, you know, the bleachers that go up. So I saw another guy. Is okay. that when you At that point, I was nervous as hell. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, struggling for my words. It got quiet a few times on my segment because of things that I was supposed to say. I couldn't say because I'm now I'm worried about my back, you know, right. or my front, you know what I'm saying? So at this point, the second time it happened, the segment was almost over. I went backstage, you know, I was angry, I was crying, I was upset, I was pissed off, and I called my Chris, uh, production manager, Chris. He called um, Joe McDavid, which is my business manager. I told him what. But it's just that I had got a call prior to that earlier today. And then for me to get here, and then this happened, then I became nervous as hell. I'm not, at this point, I'm thinking about my safety. I'm thinking about my kids. And I'm thinking about my wife. And I'm thinking about just, you know. What going. about, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, I know. But I'm just curious, because I know there was other shows that um, Jay was saying when he was here, you heard it, that you left. There was like four or five shows that you left. And he felt, I guess, because it was for the same issues that he believed it was for this one. I mean, yeah. What was the case in the other shows? The other case in the other shows, it wasn't four or five shows, I um, let me just, just I was just at the end of this. I'm and sorry, I, go ahead, finish, I can be here to the morning asking these questions. <laughs> but um, did I ever see a gun? No, I didn't. Did I see somebody just like they had a gun? Twice. And that, I became concerned about my safety. Things happened. There's been times on the show, Jay had, in the middle of the show, Jay had changed song, no problem. Jay had left the show, said he had something he had to do to cut the show short. I came out and announced to the people that it's all good. Made them look good, made me look good, and that's what it's about. That's what it's about to me. That's what it's, it'll be about tomorrow, whatever. Wow. But I got pepper sprayed on the way to the stage. So you were going to go back? So you were going to go back on stage? I was on the stage, basically, walking up the steps to the stage, on the stage. And I got pepper sprayed, and it went in my eye, went in my mind, I know what the hell it was. It's just, you know what I'm saying? And All I know is security grabbed me, and then... Got me out of um, back to the dressing room until they can secure, get cars or whatever. Ambulance came, got me. Went to ambulance, so they put some stuff in my, me and a couple of uh, securities uh, eyes or whatever. Got me to the hospital, checked me out, and here I am. Wow. But with a history of people saying that there's been a couple of shows before this that you broke out on, I, I wonder what the reason for, for those shows were. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So. Let me tell you, the reason for those shows is, as I said before, technical difficulties when it came to lighting and everything. I wish I had a million years to explain to y'all, but I'm going to try to make it short and sweet mm -hmm. as possible. In the beginning of this show, I never um, got my chance to work, work with the lighting people. We had three weeks of rehearsal, but I, you know, I never got a chance to rehearse with the lighting people. And in my 15 years, I never had a, it was never one show I've done, even in my talent show days when I wasn't even known. I got a chance to work with the lighting people, and I just did not get my chance to do that. I mean, that's hard. I just, I, I want you to make me understand, or people understand, because it's hard to understand. Let me make you understand. Yeah, I have no problem. It's hard to understand how you, you could leave an arena because of something of the lighting. Yeah. Like, how yeah. serious is that, or what would make you do that? You know what I mean? Well, 
when you are a perfectionist and you a guy that likes to give 100% with your shows and when you done put a million and a half dollars up on the stage, let me just be real with you, mm -hmm. you want your million and a half out of that because that's a lot of damn money on the stage. And when people, you feel you're being cheated out of that and nobody's giving you the chance to work with the people you're supposed to work with as far as the lighting people are concerned, that's why I always told people my, my, my deal was with the lighting people at that point in time. And, um, I, you know, everybody know about it. I went off on the light man at one point. Mm -hmm. You know, even though I finished the show out, I did go off on the light man at that point. But it was problems with the light. There was problems with a lot of things like that. But like I say, Jay has changed the show, shortened the show. He left a couple of shows. I came out and told the fans, hey, you know. So, how, I mean, what happens now? I mean, you obviously heard Jay when he came up here and how he feels, how strongly he feels about the situation. I mean, what mm -hmm. happens now? I guess this, this, this tour is not going to continue, I'd imagine. Well, I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm willing to finish the tour. I, I'm going to be here in New York tomorrow, you know, uh, at Madison Square Garden, ready to put on a show. My eyes are better, you know. Hopefully, uh, security will be checking everybody. I have no problem. But, that. I mean, the state, the state of whatever the relationship is now, I mean, Jay's obviously, mm -hmm. when you call, they didn't want to pick up. Like, that is very tense, and I guess when I upset. Called? Didn't you call, or somebody said you were calling? No? No. Earlier? Oh, okay. Well, somebody had told me you were on the phone, so I said to him you were on the phone, and he didn't even want to no, pick up the wasn't, phone. No, that wasn't me on the phone. I, I, I thought to do this very thing that I did is just come. To come by. Yeah, just like he uh, did, just like anybody I thank you for that, too. I thank yeah. you for that. But it could be a show tomorrow, and There could be a show tomorrow. It could be. I mean, I would imagine the conversation. Jay, Jay was saying he, he would want to do his show, you know, and all saying now that he wants to But these to guys go on the show t on stage together for most of the part. Like, is there any part of you that feels like maybe you could have just been panicking or something? Yeah. Tonight? Yeah, but I wasn't going to take any chances. That same day... Madison Square Garden banned R. Kelly from the arena. Jay-Z and a Atlantic Worldwide Touring then booted him from the tour and renamed it Jay-Z and Friends. On November 1st, 2004, R. Kelly sued Jay-Z, Atlantic Worldwide Touring, and his production company Marcy Projects for breach of contract and $75 million in damages. He accused Jay-Z's lighting crew of sabotaging his performances. Jay Connor sued in January 2005 claiming that Kelly turned it into a nightmarish odyssey by arriving hours late to rehearsals and meetings, delaying concerts, and making sudden demands that resulted in shows being canceled. The countersuit was eventually thrown out by a judge, and Jay and Kelly would settle out of court. Contact with R. Kelly Fisk. It, it, I, we spoke, like, you know what I'm saying, we spoke a couple of times, but I don't really want to be, like, um, I know he's getting calls from everywhere, and mm -hmm. every, you know some people are really concerned. Some people just want to be nosy. They want to oh, know yeah. what's going on in the guy's life. You know, I don't want to be another person like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you know, got love for the dude. You know, I mean, if if he's guilty, I just hope and pray that he get help. If he's mm -hmm. not, I wish everybody, you know, what I'm saying, mm -hmm. everybody embrace him. You mm -hmm. know, and, and whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I know our contact is just sparse. Okay. Were you, um, as a solo artist, were you concerned about that whole ordeal affecting you the next time you came out with this album? I wasn't, I was not, not concerned for my career, like, uh -huh. as, as far as an artist. I know, like, I mean, I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I know that. Like, I know I ain't have nothing to do with that. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, the, the alleged incident, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So. It was just, it, I was more so, if the, if the one word, that one feeling that I, you know, I think about when I think about the album is just like blown opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's like what we did with the album as far as, like we was in the process of touring. Like that was, we was putting together a show, crazy. like a show, like a yeah. two hours straight. Like you do three songs, run on stage. I'm going to do three songs, run on stage. Mm -hmm. We're going to change the set. Yeah. Then we're going to come back and do Fiesta together, then we gonna come do this one again. You know what I'm saying? It would have been something real creative, and that's that's the whole reason why that album came together was mm -hmm. just do something creative and new that nobody really done before. Is bring these two genres of music together mm -hmm. and make something really crazy, and then go out on tour and make history. We mm -hmm. probably be in Europe right now. 
Yeah, that would have. Yeah, they would probably have four legs on that toy. That <laughs> right. It would have been a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Five legs, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that. Over a decade and a half later, in 2019, Lifetime premiered a six-part docuseries called Surviving R. Kelly that highlighted allegations of sexual and psychological abuse by R. Kelly. Jay-Z was asked to be interviewed for the documentary since he still worked with R. Kelly at the height of his child pornography accusations but he declined the interview. Damon Dash, who co-founded Rockefeller Records with Jay-Z, claims that he refused to work with R. Kelly because of what he did to his then-girlfriend, Aaliyah, who R. Kelly illegally married when she was just 15. But Jay-Z, who was also friends with Aaliyah, still collaborated with the sexual predator. And I remember Aaliyah trying to talk about it, and she couldn't. You know, she just would leave it at that dude was a bad man. And I didn't really want to know what he did, to the extent that I might feel the need, you know, to, to approach, to, to, to just deal with it. Just just because that's what a man does. But it just was so much hurt for her to revisit it. It was like, I wouldn't even want to revisit it without a professional. Whatever got done was terrible. And then what bothered me was, it was like, so to be honest, like, if you remember the best of both worlds, you don't see my name on that. You know what I mean? And, and. Your name is not on either album. Hell no, I never wanted no parts of that. So when Holmes was doing that shit, I was like, bro, you know our homie violated, and he violated my girl. He violated a friend of yours. So, you know, when he moved forward with that, like me, I was like, yo, let's go! I was like, yo, I don't want no part of that. Put my part of that to, uh, to Aaliyah's breast cancer thing, you know? But then it was around the time when Jay was acting like he didn't want to really continue and move forward with all of us as partners because he didn't want bigs down because he wasn't doing nothing. But what happened was as soon as it came out, you know, the tapes came out. So karmically, it, was, it couldn't breathe. It already destroyed. But then years later, they tried to do the tour. Um, the best of both. The best yeah, but it still didn't work out. But you notice I wasn't a part of any of that, but, and the karma happens. But the thing I didn't understand is I was like, I know I'm not fucking with that. And because of the moral challenge and him choosing one way, I knew morally we weren't the same. So to me, Rockefeller was defunct. It was over. I couldn't fuck with it. It was something that to me was just like, not to say unforgivable, but un I couldn't understand it. Even, I remember, you know, again, we spoke about this. One time I remember you was at a concert and shit and you posted a picture and I called you. I was like, yo, bro, you know, you got daughters. And you know what that man did and I know what he did just based on what I was told. And you immediately was like, yo, you right. But Damon Dash may be full of crap since he can be seen here in Jay-Z and R. Kelly's video for Fiesta. He has some explaining to do. But if you guys haven't, please check out our previous video that we did on R. Kelly. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you want to continue to see more videos on pop culture stories and scandals.